Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to drive a massive truckload of salt into this, but there is another rumor concerning NVIDIA's Maxwell. The most shocking part is that it's going to be skipping 20 nm and is going to be moving straight on to 16 nanometers. But let's go into the rumors. So, effectively, these have popped up via semi accurate. And as the name would predict, or lead you to believe rather, it's unknown just how accurate this would be. But it would appear that there's going to be four, I repeat, four SKUs. So these are going to range from the GTX 880 Ti, the 880, the 870, and finally bringing up the rear, the 860. Now, apparently, various sources are stating that. There's going to be, of course, a major difference in the amount of SMXs, therefore the amount of CUDA cores. So it would appear that there's going to be between 15 to 20 SMs, um, once again, depending on the variant of the card. Now, this means that you're going to be getting between 1920 and 2560 CUDAs. So the Maxwell core is a lot more power efficient than Kepler. So, it's possible that we're going to actually be getting less cores than the GK110. So, obviously, they may be playing around with other things to improve efficiency and, of course, clock speed. The amount of memory that these cards have is also somewhat down to debate. I'm hearing figures ranging from 4 gigabytes. Once again, this is assuming the higher end models are not like, for example, the GTX 860. But I'm hearing rumours from the 4 gigabyte range all the way up to 8. Now, previously the GTX 7, uh, the 780s and the 780 Ties featured 3 gigabytes, which I personally didn't feel was quite enough, despite the fact that I do own a 780 Ti. I did feel that Nvidia put quite enough VRAM on there. Um, especially now, of course, we're getting next generation consoles. And so while it's fine for us on 1080p or 1440p, if you're looking to move to, say, 4K, which, let's face it, if you've got these type of cards, a lot of gamers are starting to move over to them, then you possibly would want to move to something like a Titan Black, not because of the extra performance, because they're pretty much indistinguishable, their actual clock speeds and uh, stream processes are pretty much identical, but the ad additional memory. So it's possible AMD, uh, sorry, Nvidia are going to be learning from that, particularly as in the eyes of many reviewers, the additional chunk of RAM on AMD's cards definitely was a positive, particularly if you're going to be, by the way, cross-firing or uh, putting them in SLI. So according to semi-accurate sources, NVIDIA are going to be skipping 20NM. Now, there have been previous murmurings in the tech industry that NVIDIA were having difficulty nailing 20NM down. They're not the only ones, might I add, but NVIDIA particularly were supposedly having issues. So instead, they've basically abandoned the ship. It's pretty much sinking without the captain, and instead everyone's paddling the life rafts over to 16nm. So, additionally, we're going to be seeing the GM204, also known, of course, as Maxwell, being relaunched on this smaller process. So what's effectively going to happen is, at some point, uh, the third quarter, or possibly early fourth quarter of this year, we're going to be seeing the GTX 80 launched. Then what's going to happen a little bit later on, uh, most likely some point in 2015, probably the guesstimates for most in the industry right now, is, and it makes sense, between four to six months. Obviously, the obvious caveat of things can slip and so forth, but the basic idea right now and the theory is that it's going to be pretty much postponed until mid to the first quarter of 2015 for these 16 NMs. So we know that there is indeed multiple different scenarios and a few of them, and that's not to say that any of these are right, but here are the most popular ones. Um, the first is that the GM204B 
are going to be called the same as the GM204A models. Now this actually happened, although it was somewhat kept quiet, but the GK110 processor actually was also released in a B revision. So this first happened on the GTX 780 GHz edition, but then it transitioned to B. Now, it takes a lot of analysis to actually know what the differences are between the GK110A and the GK110B, um, and there's still 28 NM, so it's possible that they're just going to be kind of slid in, uh, which means that effectively if you've got a GTX uh, 880, then you're still going to be getting a GTX 880. It's just going to be, uh, well, pretty much lower power. So it's almost console-like, how you get like a slimline. Now, the other theory, and one that I personally think is more likely, is that there's going to be a different naming. Because what effectively this will mean is that a smaller node decreases power consumption, right? So in other words, it requires less power, and so you don't want to make it where consumers effectively just don't know what they're buying um, because it would also lead to a lot of sneaky marketing especially as sellers are trying to pretty much get rid of old stock for example just example let's say that in let's say November the 880s are released the Let's call them revision A, so in other words, the 28 NMs. And let's assume in, let's just say March, revision B's come out. Well, can you imagine, the retailers will know beforehand, so they're all going to be trying to clamor to try and get rid of the, um, the, the A's. And then when the B's come out, you won't really know, especially on some of the more unethical retailers, you won't really know which version you're getting. And so I think that it's possible that you'll get something like maybe a, pos a plus sign, a, a minus, a uh, some type of symbol, just to let the consumer know this is the difference. I mean, it could even be that we'll get like a 785, so, or sorry, 885 just to clarify but there's another possibility it's also possible that TSMC the basically the foundry who are actually making these parts for Nvidia won't be getting good yields at the start so it's possible that the yields are going to be well let's just use the word shit so if that's possibly true it's possible that NVIDIA will have to just bite the bullet and say, you know what, we're just going to have to wait. We're going to have to wait for the GeForce 900 series. Now, many are already calling this to be the most likely scenario. And uh, it's hard to disagree. Because let's assume that you were to buy a new system um, in, let's just once again use late December. So you're buying it for yourself for Christmas. Um, the card would be pretty new, it would be maybe a month old, so you'd avoid the typical price gouging of a new card launch. Let's face it, the first like two weeks is pretty suicidal to buy a card unless you absolutely need it. Um, it's better just to wait because typically, at least, I don't know what it's like in the States, but in the UK you get like, let's just call it new card tax, and it can be pretty damn hefty, like 20-30% in some cases. Uh, especially, once again, for the less ethical retailers because there's a shortage in supply. And eBay as well can be really, really, really cut through. So let's assume you wait a month and you buy it in, let's just say, late to mid-December. Uh, what? How would you feel if three months later, NVIDIA were like, oh, by the way, this is now launched. So in other words, they've released, let's just say it's the GTX 880 Ti Plus, and it requires significantly less power, therefore has better overclocking potential, runs cooler, blah, blah, blah. You would be pissed. I would be. I would be pretty angry. I mean, I understand that, you know, six months down the line, okay, something better might come out. Especially if you buy a card, let's say in January, by next January you expect something new to be released, right? And you expect to even buy, like, maybe, let's say you buy a card in January, let's say it's released in January, 
by the time like October-ish rolls around, you think to yourself, okay, there's going to be something new possibly being released. But you would be really pissed if you plunked down like, just for example, five hundred pounds, and a new card was being released. You would be pretty angry, and I don't think Nvidia would want that because let's face it, at the end of the day, they are having to cater the consumer. So another problem, uh, another problem with that as well is their yields would also be pretty low, I imagine, with these new cards. So not only would the consumer be pretty pissed at them, but there's also the possibility that, quite simply put, well, it would cost them an arm and a leg to release it, and the cards would be very expensive. So this isn't a spec video. I don't know how much of a bump this is going to be. So, for example, let's assume you've got like a 780. How much of a bump would it be to an 880? It's unknown. Um, it's. I've heard mixed things, quite honestly. I've heard some people stating that it's going to be quite a significant leap, and others that are saying it's going to be more like a 15 to 20% jump. So, if it's like 15 to 20%, if you've got like a pair of GTX 780s in SLI, just for example, it's probably not worth buying it. And another argument as well is if you're pretty set up and you're pretty happy with your graphics performance, and to be honest with you, right now most games aren't that taxing uh, for the PC. I don't think they will be for quite some time unless you're going to go 4K. You might just be better off to say, you know what? I'm just going to wait and see what happens because AMD are being pretty quiet on the GPU front right now and it's obvious they are working on something too which is going to be fairly competitive and with the let's put it let's just be honest with the doubt over how long and with the manufacturing process I mean personally if I got the card for free like if I got sent a review sample I'd use it but I don't necessarily think I would spend my own money on a GTX 880 tie unless it was a significant performance upgrade. I'm talking at least 30 to 40 percent because it just doesn't seem worth it with the uncertainty right now. Unless Nvidia said, well, we're going to be waiting. Another little point what the hell are they going to be doing with Pascal? Pascal, by the way, is of course the one after Maxwell. So at the moment we've got Kepler, then it moves to Maxwell, then it will move to Pascal. So let's assume that the the 900 series now becomes revision B and A and uh, well let's just be honest, Nvidia have done this. For example the rather infamous uh, 8800 series moved to the 9800 series and actually uh, Nvidia got quite a lot of stick with the 9800s because, oh the 9000 series, because there wasn't that much of a bump between the 8000 to the 9000. In fact in many benchmarks it's pretty much well, a little bit faster, but not exactly super amazing and incredible performance differences. So, it's possible that we're going to be seeing that scenario. We're going to be getting, say, just complete example, but we'll be getting like 10% extra uh, increase in core clock and a slight reduction in power. So, for example, it could be a reduction of like 40 watts power consumption and 10% extra increase in clock speed for the 900 series or also known as revision B. So what happens with Pascal, are we going to be uh, calling it the GeForce 1000 series or the 1Ks or what? Hmm. Mighty curious. Anyway, it's a bit of a head scratcher this one, but stick with us. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.